What's up guys, back with another educational video. And this week we are talking about creatine hydrochloride versus creatine monohydrate. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. All right, a new study just got published looking at the effects of creatine hydrochloride versus creatine monohydrate in resistance trained men. So in this study, they had four different groups. They had a group of men who were resistance training and just taking a placebo. They had a group of men resistance training, taking creatine hydrochloride at a dosage of 0.03 grams per kilogram per day. Then they had a group resistance training doing creatine monohydrate with a loading phase. The loading phase was at 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. And then the maintenance phase after five days of loading was 0 0.03 grams per kilogram body weight per day. And then they finally had another group that was doing resistance training and creatine monohydrate supplementation at 0 0.03 grams per kilogram per day with no loading phase. Let's set up the backstory for this. Creatine monohydrate has been around for 30, 40 years now. Based on the weight of the evidence, it is the most effective supplement we have on the market for increasing lean mass, increasing strength, for improving performance, and it has been shown to be very, very safe. But supplement companies don't like creatine monohydrate because it is very widespread, everyone knows it's great, and everyone makes it. Therefore, prices get driven down. So you really can't make much money from selling creatine monohydrate because it's not a novel ingredient. What happens? Every few years, the supplement industry tries to drag up a new form of creatine to promote in order to justify charging you three to four to five times as much money. And these forms have included various creatine salts, creatine ethyl ester, which funny enough was actually shown to be less effective at increasing phosphocreatine levels, buffered creatine, brand name Crealkalin. The idea being, well, there's stomach acid and that's going to break down the creatine. It's not going to be stable. Yeah, creatine stable in stomach acid. And it's been shown to have basically 100% bioavailability. Creatine monohydrate has virtually 100% bioavailability. Buffered creatine also was shown to basically have the same effectiveness as creatine monohydrate despite charging you about four or five times the amount of money. Then along comes creatine hydrochloride. The claims were, it is much more soluble, and since it's more soluble, it's gonna be more bioavailable, and it will get into circulation better, and you won't need as much of it to get the same results. There's a few problems with the statement there. Uh, the first being that just because something is more soluble, doesn't make it more bioavailable. And, and again, we already talked about how creatine monohydrate is virtually 100% bioavailable. And yet, people who made creatine hydrochloride stuck to this. Well, guess what? Creatine hydrochloride, they can justify charging you more money for. So in this study, what was nice is they used kind of the lowest effective dose of creatine. So if there was gonna be a difference between hydrochloride and monohydrate, you would expect to see it here since the claims about hydrochloride are, well, it's more soluble, it's more bioavailable. Therefore, at the lowest dose, if we got both doses up high enough, both of them are gonna be equally effective, but at a lower end dose, that's where we should probably see differences if there are differences. These were 70 kilo men. To put that in context, it means those in the loading group for creatine monohydrate were getting about 21 grams of creatine per day during the loading phase, during that five-day loading phase. And the other group for the monohydrate or hydrochloride, also the loading group during their maintenance phase, they were all getting just over two grams of creatine per day, about 2.1 grams of creatine per day, either monohydrate or hydrochloride. They did this for eight weeks, which is plenty of time to see changes. And they looked at things like skeletal muscle mass. They looked at cross-sectional area of thigh and arm. They looked at leg press strength. They looked at bench press strength, and they looked at various different hormones. And what did they find? What they found was creatine improved pretty much across the board most metrics. The groups getting creatine had better leg press strength increases, better bench press strength increases. They had more increases in cross-sectional area. And there was a few hormones that they saw small increases with, but I'm not really worried about changes in hormones that much. The, the small increases in hormones don't explain anabolism. But were there differences between hydrochloride and monohydrate? Not one single 
measurement. Was there a difference? Also, what's important to point out here is the loading group did not have any difference in measurements to any of the other creatine groups. All the creatine groups were better than placebo, but the creatine groups compared to each other, there was no difference. What is the take home from that? You don't need to load as long as you don't mind waiting maybe a couple of weeks to saturate your muscle cells. And hydrochloride is not better than creatine monohydrate. Regardless of solubility, it is not. If you are worried about creatine being more soluble, actually what you should do is stick it in something acidic. Creatine is actually more soluble in an acidic solution and it is stable in an acidic solution. So if you're worried about solubility, you can put it in something acidic like, I don't know, orange juice or whatever you want, but you don't need to. It might be a little bit gritty. If you're worried about that, you can also get micronized creatine, which tends to mix up better, but there isn't really a good justification to spend two to three to four times the amount of money on creatine hydrochloride. Now you may say that I am biased because I sell a product containing creatine monohydrate, Outwork Nutrition Recovery. I would have told you the same thing before I ever had a supplement company, and I did say the same thing before I ever had a supplement company. I have always maintained that creatine monohydrate is the best form of creatine because you get all the results and it is the lowest cost. Trust me, if creatine hydrochloride, if I thought it was better, if there was data showing it was better, then I would put it in my product because one, hey, I like money, and if I can put something in that justifies a higher cost, that's great. And two, I want to make the most effective product possible. But three, I'm not gonna lie about the creatine I use in my product. And so the only creatine I've ever used in any of my products is creatine monohydrate because I want to provide the most effective product at the lowest cost to you, the consumer, because that is what is ethical business-wise. Again, if you wanna say that I'm just biased and this is all made up or whatever, hey, if you love spending two to four times the amount of money you need to for creatine, then knock yourself out. If you want the most effective form of creatine, the lowest cost, then the only answer is creatine monohydrate. Now, if you guys are interested in my supplement line, you can click the link in the description and check it out, and I will catch you next week.